Hey kids, this is Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. You found me out and about uh, today on a KTM. Uh, and this is the big old beast of a KTM. This is the uh, 1290 Super Adventure. Uh, and the flavour I'm riding is the T, which stands for touring. So it's got the uh, touring bits and pieces on it. If you stick around and stay tuned for the next few minutes, I'll tell you what I think of it. So this is the uh, big old adventure bike that uh, KTM have out uh, competing with the likes of the BMW GS Adventure. So it's got a massive fuel tank, big screen, plenty of bodywork to protect you from the weather, and of course that massive 1.3 litre engine, V-twin. Got the same engine as the uh, Super Duke has, so it's no slouch, and uh, KTM say that this is the lightest bike in its class, or the lightest of the big adventure bikes. And it does seem to carry its weight quite nicely. Once again, the balance of this bike is, uh, is very pleasant. It's not at all intimidating as, the, as these big adventure bikes look. So riding position, super comfortable. In fact, it feels, from a riding position point of view, exactly the same as my GS. My legs are just under the 90 degrees. It's got nice wide handlebars. Uh, your hands fall in a sort of comfortable place. And it feels very familiar. If you uh, closed my eyes and said what bike you're riding, I'd say it was my GS. It feels very much the same. And that's, uh, that's high praise. Handling-wise, she's nice and flickable. Much more so than the looks of the bike would uh, have you think. Handling around town, nice and easy. Engine, of course, lovely and tractable. Doesn't complain at low speed. And pretty easy through the traffic. What is noticeable about it though is the um, the gear change is mounted a bit sort of higher than I'd expect. Took me a bit of getting used to, you have to kind of reach your foot forward and a little bit higher than I'm used to to find where the gear change is. It's just a matter of getting used to it, it's not really a problem, it's just uh, something that uh, was a surprise when I first got on the bike. This bike of course, like all modern adventure bikes, absolutely laden with electronics, I won't bore you with all the details, but uh, this one being the touring flavour, uh, not only has it got heated grips, but it's got a heated seat as well, which I absolutely love. Although it's turned out to be a lovely day, so I don't even need them on today. Big old screen, keeps the weather off you, as does the bodywork. Uh, no turbulence, this screen is adjustable, it's manually adjustable, you have to undo these knobs here and lift it up and down. And this is on, uh, it's fairly low actually at the moment, it goes a lot higher than this, so even though I'm a shorty, I imagine if you're a taller fella, or lady, then uh, you'd be fine as far as wind protection is concerned on this bike without having to resort to aftermarket screens. The engine's got a nice, low, purposeful note about it. And the brakes work really nicely. And I have to say I'm a fan of these KTM mirrors, they're pretty practical. They don't look too bad, they're in keeping with the bike, the sort of angular design. But they don't shake around at all and you can, you know, you've got a great view behind you. You're not just looking at your elbows, which is normally the case I find. Seat nice and comfortable. Again, reminds me very much of the GS. Of course it's an, uh, you know, an all-day rider, you could ride on this all day. No problem at all. Right, let's get out of town and try a bit more on the, uh, on the twisties. It's amazing these days how the modern bike manufacturers have got bikes that are so big to be so agile. Once you're on the move, the thing, uh, you know, you can just chuck it about. I'm not actually in the market for an adventure bike at the moment, but if I were, I'd be very hard pressed to select because uh, this feels just as good as the, uh, as the GSA to me which is my kind of current favourite adventure bike. And you could argue that this uh, V-Twin is a nicer engine. It's certainly got a lot more go than the uh, big old horizontally opposed twin on the BMWs, which is a nice engine. I do like the Boxer, but this, uh, this has certainly got a lot more urgency about it. Really clear screen here again. I love the way that KTM do this. It's very obvious how to uh, select modes and so on, and to go through the screen using the controls on the left here. 
Oh, got a little smile from the speed thing there, that's good. And it's laden with information. I've got the heating off at the moment, it's quite a nice day. It's got tyre pressure monitoring and all sorts. You can change the uh, damping, the suspension on the fly, which I like. Driving modes. This one's got four modes, as you can see, sport, street, rain and off-road. I'm on street mode at the moment. If we go to sport, that unleashes the full 173 brake horsepower. Unbelievable power in these engines. But in fact, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go to rain mode. Because Jason at the dealership said rain mode is particularly good on these if you want to just poodle around in town, etc. Now, I should have tried it earlier, really. Press the set button, close the throttle. Here we go, I'm in rain mode now. Yeah, and immediately the throttle is softened up. It's a lovely little spot for a test ride. Especially on a day like this, makes a real change for the sun to come out. And I'm testing a bike. Makes you think spring is around the corner. What I need to do is get rid of white van man. The scourge of my life. I'm in rain mode, that means I've got a hundred horsepower to play with, which I'm sure will be adequate to get by White Van Man when the chance comes my way. Gearbox, despite that rather long lever, once you get used to where it is, really, really uh, light to snick into gear. No drama at all. Gearbox, much nicer than uh, on any BMW I've ridden, and the modern ones on BMWs aren't bad, I have to say. Just purrs along this engine, it's lovely. Unfortunately, I don't know this road well enough to know if I've got room to overtake this man. I don't want to take any risks on a bike that's not my own. Or indeed any bike, frankly. Okay, we're clear now. And immediately we have to slow down as we're into a 50 mile hour zone. But at least I'm past the white van, man. Okay, we're coming up to a DU restricted area and a few more twisty roads, so we should be able to try the handling out a bit. Okay, here we go. Yeah, in rain mode the acceleration is a lot more muted. Which I imagine if perhaps you've got a pillion on, or if you're in busy traffic filtering and so on, would just keep everything a bit smoother and make life easy. Lovely neutral handling through here. Again, reminds me very much of the GS Adventure. This is the problem these days, all bikes are flipping good, aren't they? How do you choose? Lovely around these twisties. Really nice. Okay, as is customary on these reviews, what I need to do is find somewhere, hopefully, picturesque, <laughs> not always the case, and show you around this beast and talk you through the all important numbers. Oh man, this is such a nice bike just to ride briskly around these twisties. The handling is beautiful. Sounds lovely. Dare I say it, I think I prefer it to the GS. Just because that engine's got a little bit more excitement than the Boxer gives you. Yet it's got all the same balance and comfort that you get on a GS. I guess it comes down to, you know, whether you like the look of the thing. Oh, coming back into 30, so that gives me fun. Right, let's find somewhere to stop and show you around the bike. This will do. Okay, so not picturesque, but uh, it'll do for a walk around. Okay, so here she is. The KTM 1290 Super Adventure. Uh, just bear with me while I get the iPhone out and I'll give you a proper look around this thing. Okay, so here we are then. The KTM 1290 Super Adventure. 
big old beast as you can see but uh, like so many of these adventure bikes hides it very very well doesn't feel big when you're riding it uh, massive engine of course the 1290 it's actually 1301 cc in a v-twin configuration uh, putting out something like 170 bhp and 140 newton meters of torque so uh, plenty plenty of grunt i mean goodness me 1.3 litre bike when i was a lad if you had a 250 it was a big bike these come with uh, wp semi active suspension again a bit like things like the gs let's have a little look down there it's all very complicated looking in there but that's where all the magic happens uh, in terms of braking it's got uh, brembo twin uh, it's got twin discs on the front and then brembo calipers uh, again these look very familiar to me these calipers again look identical to those on the gs so they've got, it's got great stopping power weight wise 222 kilograms dry uh, 238 kilograms in the wet. Uh, seat height on this one 860 millimeters uh, but this one's got the uh, seat set in its low position I can get my feet basically the balls of the feet on on the ground no problem I'm five foot eight so I'm not tall by any means and it's uh, this isn't a problem maybe a bit diff more it uh, might be more tricky with a pillion and perhaps some luggage but uh, just normal riding no problem seat capacity 30 liters it's got clever uh, electronics, it's got the Bosch cornering ABS on it to get you out of trouble. ABS of course, traction control, it's got a hydraulic slipper clutch. All sorts of riding modes, you know, all the stuff that you expect these days on from these high-tech bikes. Uh, in terms of cost, this as I say is the touring version uh, and this according to the KTM website comes in at 15,499. If you get the R which is the road version or road oriented version that's a bit cheaper at 14,499 and the S which is the sort of off-roady one 14,299. So a good price actually compared to the BMW GSA uh, you know the adventure uh, I think that's probably significantly cheaper. In terms of controls it's uh, classic KTM stuff this side you've got your uh, cruise control, very easy to use, quite obvious. You've got that very clear display in the middle that shows you all sorts of information. And then on the other side you've got that excellent, well effectively it's a mouse isn't it, that you control all that with. Okay, enough chat, let's jump back on and ride us some more. I like the fact that it comes already with crash bars because it's the sort of thing on these big bikes you would definitely want to add yourself in case of a drop. Ugh. Okay. Let's get this show on the road again. It's turning into a lovely day. Get that away before that car comes. I love this light that comes on uh, when you're at the optimum revs to change the gear. I don't know why things like that amuse me. You know, I must just take this opportunity to uh, thank Jason at the gang at the KTM Centre in Hemel Hempstead for letting me borrow the bike today. Amazing showroom up there. If you've not been there in the last year, they've moved premises and uh, massive showroom now full of orange bikes. Well worth just riding up to have a look around there. This is such a good bike. One of the things I don't like about it is uh, what they've done down here in terms of the dash. Although the dash is very clear, all the plastic work and so on down here just uh, looks a bit untidy. I don't know. I don't quite know how you do those in a more tidy way, but there's something about, for example, the GS. I prefer how it looks. That what you're looking at all the time on the GS is a much tidier setup. Unfortunately, the sun's in my face here a bit, so you may not be able to see it, but there's an awful lot of black plastic here not doing much. Uh, and that's something I'm not so keen on on the KTM. Because in terms of rideability, engine, comfort and so on, as I said, I think everything about this is probably better than the GS, but, you know, looks do count for something, don't they? And uh, I actually prefer the look of the GS, both when you're on board and looking at the bike externally. I know it's superficial and you shouldn't really, uh, you know, choose your bike on that, but like it or not, it does have an impact, doesn't it? The engine on this really is uh, something else. Again, if you want to be, you can hooligan it around, no problem at all. I 
I've got it back in street mode now and it's uh, just the right amount of power for me. It's got bags there if you need to overtake suddenly. Uh, but it's not so powerful that uh, it frightens you. And on roads like this twisty one in these sort of conditions, absolutely perfect. A joy to behold. Sadly, I need to get the bike back to uh, the dealership, although I think I'll run off with it. But very much enjoyed riding it. So there we have it, that's my uh, first impressions review of the KTM 1290 Super Adventure. I was kind of putting off riding KTMs because I'm not a big fan, as you've probably gathered, of the way they look. Uh, and everybody said how good they were. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, I didn't want to suddenly find something that was better than my GS, but that is exactly what's happened. <laughs> if you could put this engine, these riding characteristics, these engine modes, etc., into a GS, you'd have the perfect adventure bike. The reason I say that is just personal taste, I just prefer the looks of the GS. But uh, to summarise then, this bike, it's comfortable, it's very fast, it's tractable, it's got lovely light handling, the clutch is great, the mirrors work a treat, the seat is comfortable, the suspension is lovely, Wait, thank you. It sounds good. Seems to be reasonably priced. Well, there's really, uh, I can't really find much I don't like about it, other than the overall look and maybe an abundance of sort of plastic stuff here that doesn't really do much. But those are really, really minor gripes and they may not be something that to you is important. So I hope that's been of interest to you. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.